Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. MMI showed the city what we could do, but we kind of came in expecting that. We knew that people were going to be sleeping on us. It was a way to make an early statement. I know they're ranked first in the Sagarin ratings. It's, it's super exciting to know that, that anyone it's anyone's game. There's going to be a lot of emotion, but as long as we uh, stay mentally focused, then we should be able to come out with a win. Each week is really up for grabs. Anybody can win any game on any single night, so you just got to come ready to compete every single game. Say you're doing it right. Make no mistake about it, so far this season, Carol and Wayne have avoided Santa's naughty list. But which one would Chris Kringle bring an extra early Christmas present? Golden Howard joins us now with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Golden? Well, thanks, Glenn. Tis the season for basketball. And when the SAC Holiday Tournament tips off next week, it'll be Wayne as the number one seed. And instead of coaches voting on the seeds like they have in the past, the conference deciding to use a computer-generated sergeant's, sergeant's rating to determine the bracket. And if the tournament goes chalk, the top-seeded generals would meet the fourth-seeded Carroll Chargers in the semifinals. Those two squaring off tonight in your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Wayne looking awesome. They at SAC Shocker last Friday as the Generals taking down Snyder. Carroll playing the classic Beasley ball starting 4-0 this season. And they start right there with Ryan Preston hitting the three in the corner to make it 8-2. He had all eight of those points. Jaquan Kaiser, great space on the side as he hits the jumper, getting the approval from his teammates. Steal and a fast break by Samuel Stryker. He takes it coast to coast and finishes it with the one-handed slam to make it up by 10. Chargers picking up where they left off in the third quarter. Jalen Jackson drops the floater 20 to 8. Ball kicked back out to the top and guess who it is? Ryan Preston in the corner. Money. He drops 20 points in the game. But Wayne trying to get something working right here. Quincy Miles hits the jumper, but Carroll would be too much. And Cody Berkey buries the three for good measure. Wayne loses tonight 34 to 63 to Carroll. Uh, my teammates had uh, great drives. They found me in the corners and I hit down shots. And uh, it was just a great overall win by our team. It's a big team win going into the end, uh, the tournament and uh, we're looking uh, forward to competing against the seeds coming our way. Well with Wayne being ranked number one we showed up tonight obviously um, I feel really good about our chances in the SAC tournament. Um, uh, we got south side and we're going to prepare well and then we're going to be ready to get back at Wayne the next time. Next up Wayne hosts Columbia City tomorrow while Carroll heads to Norwell for a Saturday night game at the Castle. Glenn, back to you. Yeah, SAC number one seed loses by 30. It is going to be an interesting tournament next week. A Homestead and Lowers both opening SAC play with wins Friday. Uh, both were looking to pick up win number two in conference. That was Nick Thompson with three of his ten in the first quarter. And then it's Grant Simons. Simons so silky. He had 21 on the game, but Lures hitting the three ball early on. It's Landon Moore with three of his 11, and Lures with an early two-point lead. It's Simmons down low for a pair. Again, he had 21, and then it would be the Luke Goody show. Not only offense, but Goody with the swat, and then uh, the Knights make a mistake and leave Goody wide open for a three. He squares up. You knew it was going down. He had 23 to lead everybody as Homestead wins this one, 68-57. to So by Hay Arena we go. It's namesake, of course, the legendary coach passing away last weekend. We wish his family the best. They were honoring him tonight, an Indiana Hall of Famer. He was 91 years old. Now, Snyder got beat by Wayne last Friday, and they were looking to get back on the horse. It's Isaac Farnsworth for three of his 19, and then Dylan Duff with the outlet pass to Michael Ely, and Ely knows what to do with it. He slams it home, and Snyder up by eight in the early going. Surely we wouldn't have more for Michael Ely in the first quarter. We would. He dunks it. He had 23 points, and Snyder out to an early lead. You're going to see Northside's Isaiah Moore pop the triple here, but Snyder gets a win, 101-70 at Bayhay Arena. So thanks to a win over rival Northside last Friday, Southside fresh off winning the first go-round of the newly minted Reichert Hay Memorial Trophy. Archers at Northrop, and it was Northrop 
Making uh, some shots there in the third quarter. That was Elijah Fincher that would give Norfolk the lead at 34-32. Then it was Jaden Billingsley on the good feed from Kanoa Ridley as kid tested Rod Chamble approved. Southside going inside, Trevion Jones, he would lead the Archers with 19, got the and one there. Norfolk counters with a little post play of its own. It's to Quay White with a bucket. Then you're gonna see Nick Haynes bury the three. He had 16 to lead the Bruins, but Southside with a furious fourth quarter, they come back and win it. 55-53 at Mark Chef Gymnasium. Final stop for the SAC Bowlers. We're gonna head to the cage. We're talking Phil Brockman and Concordia hosting Bishop Dwenger, and this one was a good one. Evan Minger with the lay-in right there, and that would give Concordia a 26-20 to a four-point lead at the half. Third quarter, it's Jaden Pardon's world, and we're just living in it. He drains the three, Concordia by seven, and then Pardon does it again. It gave Concordia a 10-point lead. He breaks out the bow and arrow, but guess what? Brandon Lytle, he saw that. He would answer. He drains the three, and then, yeah, it's, it's bow and arrow time. He knows what he's doing. How about Hunter Burns with a two here for the fight in Kostoffs? This one goes down to the buzzer, and it's Concordia winning on a buzzer beater, 49-48 over the six. A rivalry renewed in Blackhawk Christian. The Braves became the first ranked second in this week's 2A state poll. They were taken on a Canterbury team on a three-game winning streak at first. It was pretty good. He had 30 points and 17 boards. Five-point lead to Blackhawk in the early going. Second quarter now. Marcus Davidson, two of his 17, and the lead now at 12 for the Braves. The Cavs trying to counter. They played some good ball this year. Will Shank, it's Shank with the stank. He slams one down for Canterbury. 35-28, they cut the lead to seven, or the deficit for them to seven. And then it's Noah Drapala. He had 14. Canterbury hung around for a while, but it's Blackhawk winning 74 to 53. Well, this one had game of the year potential as far as the NECC goes. The only two teams left unbeaten in conference squaring off. Busco at 2A number five, Prairie Heights. Elijah Malone, six foot eight, and he can do that. He is nasty. Prairie Heights with an early lead in front of a packed house. How about Mike Perkins? Mike Perkins can shoot. And uh, Busco found that out the hard way. It's an early six-point lead for Prairie Heights. No wonder they're undefeated. Braden Paris would knock one down off the nice passing there from Busco, but it's a 10-point lead for Prairie Heights. This guy was on fire, though. Brandon Crisplieb. You're going to see him hit the three. He had 15 points alone in the first quarter. That would outscore Busco in the first quarter alone. Mr. Chris Fleeb and Prairie Heights victorious as they stay undefeated, 87 to 61. Well, we are going to take a quick two-minute timeout, but when we come back, we're going to hit up a full slate of SAC girls basketball. Two teams unbeaten in conference play going head-to-head -to -head tonight. Can Bishop Lures take down perennial powerhouse homestead, or would the Spartans take a big step toward another conference crown? We answer those questions up next in The Zone. It's a holly jolly season. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And we're going to get Canada. And there's more Highlight Zone after the break. Yeah! Hello, Homestead Spartans. And you're watching the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Well, they say defense wins championships. And if that's true, then uh, Homestead and Lures are in pretty good shape. Spartans and the Knights have the top two defenses in the SAC so far this season, both teams holding opponents to less than 40 points a game. Coincidentally, both came into the night undefeated in conference as Homestead 4-0 in the sack, Lures 3-0. Lydia Reinbold is going to play her college ball at Bellarmine University down in Louisville. She hit the three, Lures up by four, and then Sarah Sylvester with the pilfer and the pair as Lures would go up by eight. Homestead fans wondering what the heck is happening here. Well, guess what? Lures is pretty darn good. However, Homestead goes inside. Amber Austin really coming into her own game this season with the deuce there. And then it's a block party. Woo! Ayanna Patterson with one. And a couple more trips down the court result in the same thing. Yeah, Patterson just denying everything at the rim. And then watch Riley Parker, the future Mastodon, beat the halftime buzzer. Lures led at half, but Homestead comes back to win it in a good one, 46-37. I mean, it's, it's so good for us. Um, you know, teams like Lures, Southside, Carroll, Concordia, they always give us a big challenge, and especially going to the holiday tournament. Um, it just prepares us for pressure, close games like we'll see in the postseason run. 
All right, Homestead and Lure, Southside came into the night undefeated in conference play, the Archers at Northrop. And we pick it up with the transition game from the ladies in green, Olivia Smith. Livy, a sophomore with the bucket, and Juanita Goodwill says that's exactly how we want to play. Southside kicking it out to J.C. Jones. It's a good idea. The lefty stroke is good. At last check, she had 26 points and 10 boards. The Archers up by one in the first quarter. Jasia Scott with a little floater there. Defense in her face. It's a tough one, but simply too much Southside. Lamaya Woodson verbally committed to Youngstown State. She's a D1 post player for the Archers. Southside wins at 78 to 60 at Northrop. Carroll's Mark Redding earning his 300th win last Friday night. Redding and the Chargers saw battling one of his former teams, the Wayne Generals. We pick it up with Delaney Sheets in the second quarter, and Sheets can shoot. She nails the three, but Wayne looking to counter, and they do it in the form of Amelia Diaz. She knocks it down, but it's Carroll up 31 to 10 at the half. Now, third quarter off the steal, you're going to see Sanaya Jackson lay it in. And Carroll goes on to run away with this one, 66-32 over the visiting generals. At Concordia, the cadets coming in ranked 17th in the latest 3A state poll. Concordia hosting Dwinger, Annika Nelson to CC Callaway and uh, CC a regular on the highlight zone. 9-2, Concordia jumps out to an early seven-point lead. Dwinger coming the other way. Molly Ree misses. Maggie Cheever does not. Cheever. Gets the friendly roll right there, and it's just a three-point lead for Concordia. How about Cheever? To Brianna Yeager with the basket. It's just a one-point game at that point, but London bets. She misses. Shanti's Craig does not. This one went down to the wire. Concordia wins a good one, 43-40 to 40 over the Saints. Last stop in the SAC, Snyder at Northside. And oh, baby, it was a good night for the Snyder Panthers. They kick it around Jada Kepney, nailing the three, and Snyder in the third quarter up 39 to 15. Northside trying to get something going. Jasmine Chambers having a nice season. She gets the bucket, but the deficit for the Legends is at 30 points, and Snyder was not about to let up. Markeisha Weeks to Jaden Eastham, and it was a 51-17 lead. In the fourth, you're gonna see a little Northside action here. Jashanik Brooks down Broadway for the bucket, but Snyder wins this one big, 70-24. Back out of Blackhawk, the Braves got a full game winning streak snapped with a recent overtime loss to Heritage. Could they get back to their winning ways against Canterbury? Fourth quarter, Sarah Plant with the steal, and Haley Klein with the score. Later, it's Plant. With a name like Plant, she's got to be familiar with photosynthesis. Chlorophyll, more like Borophyll. She drains the three. 54-16 the lead, and then you're going to see Haley Kramer with the pilfer and the pair as Blackhawk wins 65-16 over the Cavaliers. Final stop for high school hoops, back up to LaGrange, Busco and Prairie Heights. Heights is Terry Taylor and her and the Panthers coming in, having won four of their last five. Pick it up in the third quarter, Prairie Heights, Kennedy Kugler with the offensive rebound and the putback. It was a 30-17 Prairie Heights lead. How about Alexis German? Good passing, and she drains it from downtown. Now 33-17, a 16-point lead for the Panthers. Audrey Hulzenbeck with the and one for Churubusco, but it would not be enough for the Eagles on the road tonight. Cheyenne Duncan would get the put back here as Prairie Heights goes on to win 50-34. we got more Highlight Zone coming up next, including your gem of the night. We are the state champion Blackhawk Braves. Stay tuned for the gem of the night. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Merry Christmas from Prairie Heights. Here's your gem of the night. Oh, they said it. We are feeling generous. Normally, we only have one play for the gem of the night. But, you know, in the Christmas spirit, you can't have enough generosity. So we're going to give you two. Let's take a look at it now. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers gems of the night. And for the first one, we go out to Bay Hey Arena. Michael Ely slamming it down. The kid had 23 of 70, scored 101. And then it's Will Shank. Shank with the stake for Canterbury. He slams one home. Again, it's Mr. Ely and Mr. Shank with your Highlight Zone 
Peter Franklin Jewelers Gems O the Night. Congratulations. Hopefully they'll have a Merry Christmas. Hey, you've seen these guys the past few seasons during the uh, football portion of the Highlight Zone, and now they're heading to the Mid-American Conference together. Homestead's Griffin Little inking with Bowling Green. He'll play tight end for the Falcons. Cam Rogers heading to Miami University. He's going to play linebacker for the Red Hawks. Both named to the Indiana Football Coaches Association Top 50 among the best players in the state. They're both graduating high school early and enrolling in college for the upcoming spring semester. Um, I've been dreaming of this day since I can remember. This is such an accomplishment and um, I'm just proud of myself and thankful for everyone that made it possible. Bowling Green felt like home. From the second I uh, went there, I felt like they, their coaching staff was there with open arms. Uh, just joy. Um, it's something I've been working for ever since I was a little kid. It's, it's always been a dream of mine and I've always wanted to you know, make my family proud in that way. And This definitely isn't going to be it for me and I, I definitely have a, a lot of hard work to get to where I want to be, but uh, it, it definitely feels like a great step in my life. Congrats to those guys both. Back to basketball. Matt Ants at the G League Winter Showcase out in Vegas. Ants facing the Northern Arizona Suns. That's DJ McCall, former Highlight Zone star at Concordia High School. He's now a pro. He got the and one. The Ants up by four. And then in the fourth quarter, this is the biggest basket of the game. Brian Bowen drains the three and was fouled. The Ants earn a victory 99-94 over the Suns. Closer to home, Indiana Tech ranked 11th in the country in NAIA Division II women's hoops. The Warriors hosting Trinity this afternoon. First quarter, Kyra Whitaker. Oh, yeah, Tech in control. Whitaker had 12, one of six Warriors in double figures. And you may remember this young lady from her time on the highlight zone, Emma Wolf, the Bishop Lewis grad. She was in double digits, 11 points and seven boards. And then you're going to see Miss Foy, Erica Foy, go all the way to the rack as Indiana Tech wins big time, 98-49. to Last lineup. stop tonight after a two-week road trip, the Comets back at the Coliseum. The case hosting the Indy Fuel, and it was, it was Teddy Bear Toss night. First Comet school means the fans toss them on the ice. They get donated to the disorderly Bear Den. That's a non-profit that uh, collects stuffed animals for those in need. Second period, it was A.J. Jinx with the power play goal. And as you can see, out come the Teddy Bears. Great stuff and good generosity from the Comets fans tonight. Uh, unfortunately for K's fans, they wouldn't go home happy. The K's do fall on this one in overtime, 4-3 to the Indy Fuel. K's are back home again tomorrow when they host the Cincinnati Cyclones. Puck dropping at 7:35, and hopefully by then they've got those teddy bears cleaned up off the ice. Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. As a matter of fact, it is the final Highlight Zone for 2019. Yeah, we don't have a Highlight Zone next Friday or the Friday after that on January 3rd, but. I'll tell you, Colton Howard will be in next Friday talking SAC tournament, and we are going to have some very interesting games out at Wayne High School, and he'll have you covered next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for that SAC holiday tournament. For Colton, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you later.